This will be a very brief summary of a very complex subject that has taken months and years of, of staff work and necessarily uh, condensed pretty severely. Uh, to start, I, I need to make it really clear that what I'm talking about here is the tradition, the so-called traditional relicensing process in which uh, the whole business is governed by a set of regulations and, and statutes. And I'm speaking about the process of prescribing fishways over uh, the, the hydro project facilities. I'm not here to talk about the, the potential for dam decommissioning and removal, which uh, we, I'll, I'll elaborate on a little bit in, in a minute. Uh, I'll start by saying, just in case there's any question, that's not a fish ladder. <laughs> To briefly describe the geography for those who might not be familiar, of course, the entire basin starting from Crater Lake and, and down with the Trinity and out at the mouth. The hydro project dams lie between Klamath Falls and Interstate 5. And that's what's known as the Klamath Hydroelectric Project. This map. Uh, was used to display a lot of the different uh, parties and issues involved, but here we're, we're talking about this particular reach of the Klamath River. Iron Gate Dam, the lowest facility in the project, is about 180 river miles above the mouth. These are some of the main facilities. The lowest on the river is Iron Gate Dam. That's where the current, uh, that's the current limit of anatomous fish. Moving upstream, there's COPCO 2, which is a small re-regulation structure for the large dam COPCO 1. COPCO 1 was the first that was built back in 1917-1918. And then uh, in the 1960s, J.C. Boyle Dam was constructed as well as Iron Gate. None of these, of course, with, with Iron Gate having no passage for anatomous fish, none of these fish see uh, salmon today. Originally, salmon went into the upper basin. Copco, the construction of Copco 1 stopped the movement of salmon up into the upper basin. There is uh, a ladder here that you might see on J.C. Boyle Dam that provides passage for trout today. Within the Klamath Hydro Project, that is between Iron Gate Dam and Link River Dam, which is the control structure for Upper Klamath Lake, there are about 58 miles of habitat for anatomous fish that is currently blocked. And then on above Link River, up into the Williamson, Wood, and Sprague Rivers, there is a, a large amount of additional habitat, and we think that the total is about 300 miles of former salmon habitat, or salmon and steelhead habitat that is now blocked by the project. And this map just lays out some of the various tributaries that were accounted for in our assessment in which we added up the, the miles, and that's these, these tributaries. Okay, now that was the interesting part. Um, <laughs> But this process is strictly bound by statute and regulation, and, and that's the arena in which the agencies are operating. Um, most importantly, the Federal Power Act allows the Secretary of Interior and Secretary of Commerce discretionary authority to require conditions to be included in new hydroelectric licenses. And so that's where the Fish and Wildlife Service and NOAA Fisheries are operating now. That's under Section 18 of the Federal Power Act. Also under Section 4E of the Federal Power Act, other agencies have some mandatory authorities. And in this case, in this case that uh, applies to, in uh, certain reaches in certain places, to the Bureau of Land Management and to the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. Then more recently, there are new regulations that provide the licensees and other parties uh, opportunity to provide alternatives and to dispute the facts that were the basis for the original preliminary prescriptions. And I'll come back to that here. 
Our preliminary prescriptions were filed jointly by the Fish and Wildlife Service and NOAA Fisheries back in March, and these are preliminary prescriptions. They would provide fish ladders, moving upstream, fish ladders at Iron Gate, Cupco 1 and 2. It would modify the existing ladder at Boyle. There is a, an, already an existing ladder at Keno. So that would allow upstream passage for salmon, steelhead, and lamprey all the way up into the project. There's already an existing la ladder at Link River Dam. Then for fish migrating downstream, there would be facilities to enable that. Um, at Link River Dam, there's already downstream passage, but those um, powerhouse inlets there need to be screened. They're pulling thousands of young suckers through those powerhouses now. Uh, Keno Dam needs some spillway modifications. There would be modifications to the screen uh, system at, and bypass at J.C. Boyle. Uh, importantly, in BLM's uh, prescription, they provided a modification of the flow. Today, water is impounded in J.C. Boyle Reservoir and then released down the Power Canal, bypassing the river. And on a volumetric basis, about 90% of the flow of the Klamath River goes down the canal and through the powerhouse, and then that results in what's called the so-called peaking reach, where the, the river fluctuates um, substantially as a result of the generation. BLM's prescription would change that ratio from 90 to 10 uh, to a ratio of about 40% of the water in the river and about 60% used for hydro generation. That would substantially change the peaking operation, and it would also change the fluctuation in the peaking reach. Then moving on downstream, there would be downstream facilities uh, constructed at the two Copcos and also at Iron Gate Dam. So under the preliminary prescriptions, there would be complete passage for anatomous fish all the way through the project in both directions.